JC, easy dude. Finish your breakfast first. It's only eight o'clock in the morning. You have no idea, Dad. I am so excited for our mission, Red Fort. Yeah, you'll have a rollicking time there. Wait here, son. I will go and get the tickets. Boy, oh boy, what a fabulous construction! Here, JC, meet your guide, Zizu. He knows everything about the Red Fort. Can you tell me something about the Red Fort? Of course I can. This fort was originally built by Raja Anandpal and later expanded and improved by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in 1639 AD. There are a lot of buildings inside the fort, isn't it? Yes. There are five important buildings in this complex. Come along this way. This is the Moti Masjid. It was built by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. What brilliant architecture! Do I've heard there are two other Moti Masjid, one in Delhi and the other at Lahore. Yes, both of them were built by Shah Jahan. The one at Lahore is. Gee, are they civil engineers? I'm getting bugged. Let's take a peep inside the mosque. Gee, this is a great place. Hey, what is that? I wonder what is written all over this wall in this queer language. There is nobody around whom I can ask. Let's ask the wall itself. Here comes Gizmo JC. Assalamu alaikum. Huh? What? This is a greeting. Anyway, hi, buddy. Hi. JC, what is this strange writing all over your body? Is it Russian? <laughs> no, my boy. The language is Farsi. You can also call it Persian. It was the language used by the Mughals. The writing describes the conquests of the Mughals. Wow, war stories! I love them. I want to know about the Mughal war stories. First, tell me, what do you know about the Mughal? Uh, not much. I am afraid that your knowledge is pretty limited. <laughs> Anyways, Babur was the founder of the Mughal dynasty. Was Babur an Indian? No, he came from a place called Fergana in Afghanistan. In 1526, he defeated the Sultan of Delhi, Ibrahim Lodi, at Panipat, and captured Delhi and Agra. Wow! Was Babur a great fighter? Yes, JC, he was. In the next year, he defeated Rana Singh, Rajput rulers and allies at Kanua, and later defeated the Rajputs at Chanderi. Are all these things written here? Hmm. Do you doubt my words? No, no. I was just asking. So far, I have told you only about Babur. There were five more important rulers of the dynasty. All their conquests are documented here. Oops. I'm sorry. I will not doubt your word again. Babur's son was Humayun. Humayu divided his inheritance according to the will of his father. His brothers were each given a province. So he had a good heart, and he thought about his brothers. He had an overambitious brother named Mirza Kamran, who weakened his quest against the other Afghan rulers. What a greedy brother! This is only the beginning, JC. In every generation of the Mughal rulers, the emperor was thwarted by either his brother or his own son. All of them had their eyes set on the emperor's throne. Anyways, where was I? You were talking about Humayun. Yes, Sher Khan, a brave Afghan king, defeated Humayun at Chosa in the year 1539. And later at Kanauj in the year 1540, forcing him to flee Iran. What happened?
happened to Humayu then? Was that the end? Not at all, JC. Humayu bounced back strongly. In Iran, Humayu received help from Safavid Shah. He recaptured Delhi in 1555. Yeah, that's the spirit. Righto. But unfortunately, he died in an accident in the following year. Oh gosh, who is the next king then? It was Akbar. He became king at the age of 13. Wow, cool. I'm 12. I fancy being a king next year. <laughs> it was not easy. He had great responsibility over his shoulders at an early age. He was guided by a faithful noble named Behram Khan. Akbar was very brave and showed skills in warfare at an early age. It was great. Akbar ruled for 49 long years and his campaigns can be broadly divided into three timelines for the sake of convenience. 49 years? Wow, that was quite a long time. Yes, from 1556 to 1570, Akbar became independent of the regent Bahram Khan and other members of his domestic staff. Military campaigns were launched against the Suris and other Afghans and the neighboring kingdoms of Malwa and Gondwana. What is a military campaign? A military campaign denotes the time during which a given military force conducts a battle in a given area. Hmm. Then Akbar proceeded to annex the Sisodia capital, Chittor. Then he captured Ranthambor in the next years. Well, that was a good job in a span of 15 years. Indeed it was. In the next 16 years, that is, from 1570 to 1585, military campaigns in Gujarat were followed by campaigns in the east, in Bihar, Bengal and Orissa. Wow, there are so many things to be known. Let's do a quick recap. It was Malwa and Godavna to start with, followed by Chittor and Rantambor. Then there were campaigns in Bihar, Bengal and Orissa, right? <laughs> I have never seen an intelligent boy like you. During these years, Akbar had to deal with constant revolt from his half-brother Mirza Hakim. Another ambitious person. Yes. In the last 20 years, that is, from 1585 to 1605, his territory increased in leaps and bounds. Kabul, Kashmir and Kandahar, three provinces in the northwest, were annexed. So all of the emperor's territories were in the northwest? Not at all. Campaigns in the Deccan started and territories like Berar, Kandesh, and parts of Ahmednagar were conquered. Indeed, half of the subcontinent was under his belt. Wow, he was a real emperor. Yes, JC. But everything comes with a price. Price? During the last years of his reign, Akbar was distracted by the rebellion of his son Prince Salim, also known as the future emperor Jahangir. Now, an over-ambitious son. Was Jahangir the next ruler? Yes, he was. He did not have any major conquest. One important incident under his reign was the surrender of the Sisodia ruler of Mewar, Raja Amar Singh. Did he have an over-ambitious son too? <laughs> Your presumptions are good. Indeed, Prince Khuram, the future emperor Shah Jahan, rebelled in the last years of his reign. The efforts of Noor Jahan, Jahangir's wife, to marginalize him were unsuccessful. Same story again. Mughal campaigns continued under Shah Jahan. He launched campaigns both in Northwest and in Deccan. In Deccan, the Bundelas were defeated 
Ahmednagar was captured in 1632. What about the northwest? Shah Jahan was not so successful in the northwest. He failed to defeat the Uzbeks. What about his son? Did he revolt too? I will tell you about the most brutal episode of Mughal history. What was that? Shah Jahan had four sons: Tara Shuko, Shah Suja, Murad Baksh, and the youngest, Aurangzeb. Shah Jahan fell ill in 1657, and a conflict started between his four sons. A series of bloodbath followed. Aurangzeb was victorious and he killed his three brothers and ascended the throne. Such cruelty. Yes, JC. All for the golden throne. Aurangzeb was a real war monger. From the start of Aurangzeb's reign until his death, he was engaged in constant warfare. Why was Aurangzeb constantly in war with the other rulers? This was because he didn't have any regards for the other rulers. He even intervened in Rajput politics. Didn't the others protest? The other rulers did protest, and Aurangzeb's rule was tormented by several revolts. In 1667, the Yusufzai Pashtuns revolted near Peshawar and were crushed. In 1669. The Jats around Mathura revolted and led to the formation of Bharatpur state after Aurangzeb's death. Who is the most persistent of all? Good question. The persistent of all was Shivaji. Did Shivaji do campaigns against the Maratha chieftain Shivaji were initially successful? Then was Shivaji successful in his mission due to his persistence? No. Raja Jai Singh, a Mughal, launched an attack on Shivaji in which he was defeated. Oh no! Shivaji was defeated? Yes. Shivaji agreed for peace and was brought to the Mughal court. Aurangzeb insulted him and put him under house arrest. Shivaji made a daring escape and resumed his campaign against the Mughals. Was he defeated again? No, never again. Shivaji ruled as an independent king until his death in 1680. Hail Shivaji! Hail Maratha! How did Aurangzeb interfere in the Rajput politics? He interfered in the internal politics of the Rathor Rajputs of Marwar which led to their rebellion. After that, Aurangzeb got a taste of his own medicine his own son prince akbar rebelled against him and received support from the marathas and deccan sultanates so how did aurangzeb react after akbar's rebellion aurangzeb sent armies against the deccan sultanates bijapur was annexed in 1685 and later golconda in 1687 From 1698, Aurangzeb personally managed campaigns in the Deccan against the Marathas, and Akbar fled to Persia. What happened to Aurangzeb after that? He died at a ripe age of 89, and a feud for succession started amongst his sons. Ha! The same old story. JC, where are you? I have to go now, buddy. Anyways, it was nice meeting you. Goodbye, my friend. It was a pleasure talking to you. It's time to go back. See, did you enjoy the trip? Thoroughly, Dad. It was an absolute Mughal treat.